Hello and welcome to Bubble Languages. Today I want to work on a reading exercise for B1. It's called Animals in the City and it is part of the Learn English Teens program from the British Council. Okay, the first thing you need to take into consideration is that you can click on this link and you will find all these activities. You can do them and then you can mark them. So you are free to go in the sense that that will give you some freedom and that will give you some time and space for you to mark your work. Okay, I will read the article. Recently, there have been many reports in newspapers and on TV about big animals coming into towns and cities. There have been bears in Vancouver parks, leopards on the streets of Mumbai and wild pigs in gardens in Berlin. What happens when big animals come into our cities? Is it a good thing or is it dangerous for us and the animals? Wild animals usually come into the cities, into cities to look for food. In Cape Town, South Africa, baboons sometimes come into the suburbs. They eat fruit from gardens and go into people's kitchens and take food from cupboards and fridges. Baboons are strong animals and sometimes they scare children and fight with pet dogs. Many people do not like them, but the city can be dangerous for baboons too. Sometimes baboons are hurt in car accidents and the sugar in human food can be very bad for the teeth. The city council in Cape Town has a team of baboon monitors. The job is to find baboons in the city and take them back to the countryside. The, this makes the city safer for people and it is healthier for the baboons. The problem is that a lot of baboons will come back to the city to, to find food again. In Germany, groups of wild pigs sometimes come into the city to look for food. Pigs have come into the city for hundreds of years, but now the winters are warmer. There are more pigs than in the past. Pigs eat flowers and plants and dig in gardens and parks in the city. They also walk in the street and cause traffic accidents. Some city residents like the pigs sorry, like the pigs and give them food. But the city council is worried about their traffic accidents. They have told people to stop giving the pigs food and have put fences to stop the pigs entering the city. In Moscow, in Russia, there are 35,000 wild dogs. They live in parks, empty houses, markets and train stations. Some of the dogs were pets that people did not want to see did not want, so they left them on the streets. Others were born on the streets and have always lived there. Some dogs live alone and others live in packs. A, packs. a pack is the name for a group of dog. In 2010, scientists studied dogs. They found some very interesting facts. Packs have leaders. The leaders are the most intelligent dogs and not the biggest or strongest ones. Dogs know that it is safer to cross the street with people and some dogs, some dogs understand traffic lights. Dogs have learned that people give more food to small cute dogs than to big ones. The cutest dogs in a pack wait on the street for people to give them food. When they have got some food, they share it with the other dogs in the pack. Some dogs have started traveling on the Moscow underground trains. What do the people in Moscow think of the dogs? A lot of people like them and are used to seeing them on the streets. They give, them, they give the dogs food and water to drink. The winter in Moscow is very cold with lots of snow and temperatures of minus 10 degrees Celsius. It can be hard for dogs to survive, but some city residents have built small huts for the dogs to live in during the winter. 
I didn't realize that I had to put this together. Mice, squirrels, and birds often live in cities and survive. Some bigger animals like the dogs in Moscow can survive in the city too with a little help from their human friends. For many big animals, cities are dangerous places and they need our help to return to, to, return to the countryside. And this article was written by Robin Newton. Now you have to do the preparation exercise first, then read the text and do the exercises to check your understanding. For the preparation, you have words like cupboard, bin, vet, baboon, lorry, mice, bear and squirrel and you have eight pictures. You need to look at the pictures and match them up with the corresponding words and you can write your answers here. Now check your understanding grouping. Basically here what you need to do is to read the sentences and then classify them according to whether we're talking about the baboons in Cape Town, the pigs in Berlin or the ducks in Moscow. People help them survive with the cold winters, survive the cold winters. Some of them have learned to travel by public transport they have been coming into the city for centuries. Sometimes children are scared of them. They sometimes take food from people's houses. Some of these animals were originally pets. People are not allowed to give them food. The city council has put up fences to stop them. And now the following exercise, um, basically you have to read the sentences and tell me whether they are true or false according to what you have read. Human food is bad for baboon's teeth. Sorry, baboon's teeth. You have to read, I was thinking that you have to read the sentence properly because sometimes there are tricks in them. The baboon monitors feed the baboons. There are more pigs in Berlin now because people give them food. The dogs in Moscow always live in packs. Baboons and pigs sometimes cause traffic accidents. Um, people are more generous to big dogs. Check the text again and find out whether the sentences are true or false. Now, speaking of writing, important parts of exams and important parts in life which are parts that students don't normally do for some reason. But it is nice to do some research in the topic, on the topic and then write a small paragraph to answer the questions. I mean, if I were to ask you these questions in an exam or an examiner were to ask you these questions, you should be able to answer them. And it is a lot better if you actually write some research and know what you're talking about, you know, introduce a topic, then expand a little bit on it, give some facts, and then uh, conclude what you're saying. The questions are which animals do you see in the town or city where you live? Are any of them dangerous? Does your town or city have any problems with wild animals? And to finish off, I like to play this Kahoot game with you. It's a very easy sort of game, but it's nice and enjoyable. And as usual, if you've got any questions, please do not hesitate to write me an email, drop me a message, um, write a comment in, in the comments box below the video or visit my website, or if you know my phone number, you can contact me. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. I hope you enjoy your time, and I'll see you in the next video.